Hey students, welcome to yet another wonderful session. So in this session, we will be talking about the pairs of lines. So this is from your chapter, Lines and Angles. All right, so let's get started. So before I start the session, an important update for you that Baiju's mini learning program is now free, but it's a limited period offer. So to avail this, you have to use this code YTFREE all in caps. Now link is there in the description. After this, you can go check this out, but let me first tell you what all benefits you're getting here. So basically two teacher advantage you are getting and one-on-one -on -one guidance from the personal mentor, live interactive classes, after class assignments and assessments also you are getting. And also three sessions you're getting absolutely free. So you can book the class at whatever time you want to. And that means class timings you can choose yourself and whatever subjects you want to take the class for. But remember the code YT free. And I hope that everybody has joined the Telegram channel. But if you haven't yet, please do join it. The link is there in the description. Now let me tell you what all benefits you are getting on Telegram. Session PDFs, the whatever sessions we are doing here, their session PDFs would be shared via Telegram channel. And revision questions, quizzes, Sunday some interesting Sunday facts, homework questions, and yes, session updates as well, you would be getting at this channel. All right, so if you haven't joined it yet, please do join it, link is there in the description. All right, so let's not waste any more time here, let's get started. So, first let's start with the basic building block of geometry, what is a point? So if you take a sharpened pencil, the more sharper the pencil is, the thinner would be the dot, right? So a point is nothing but that's actually a dot which determines the location. It has no dimensions. It's got no length, no breadth, no height. That's what a point is. But see, if, let's suppose, if we have two, two points, so if I join them, we get a line segment because a line segment is nothing. It's just the collection of points between the two endpoints. Like if you see over here, this AB, that's nothing but that's a line segment. You can see these endpoints over here. So I cannot extend this in any of the directions. But if you extend this on one side, let's suppose, like this, yes, on both the sides, what do you get? You actually get a line. So a line is made up of set of points which is extended in both directions infinitely. So in both the directions, you can see this arrow. That means we can extend this in either directions. So here this line is represented by AB. Now what if, if I extend this, is in only one of the directions. And so this is the starting point, starting with A. That's a fixed point, but it has no end point. That's what a ray is. So a ray is nothing but it's a line with a starting point but no end point. So here ray is represented by AB. Now here what do we have? We have got this line, we have got this ray and we have got line segment. Like you can see over here it's got one starting point but no end point, right? That's a ray. And if you look at this it has got on both the directions, it can be extended infinitely. And in line segments, we can see these two endpoints. So I hope this is clear to you what ray is, what a line is, and what is a line segment. And what if, what if we see that two lines are actually meeting at one common point, they're sharing one common point. What do we call that common point? That common point, like over here it is O, that is, this is the common point, and these lines over here, these are called the intersecting lines. Like these lines L1 and L2 over here, these are intersecting lines, and O is the common sharing point that they have. Moving to the next terminology that we frequently use in this chapter, that is the transversal. So transversal is basically a line that intersects two or more lines at distinct points. Like here you can see these two lines are intersected at these two points, right, by another line. So here that line is nothing but that's called a, the one represented with yellow. That's called a transversal. Here over here you can see three zigzag lines, right? They are intersected by this transversal over here. Here we have got two parallel lines, right? Parallel lines are the ones which never meet each other, right? So they are also intersected by a transversal. Now let's move ahead and let's see how, well like what all angles are made by a transversal. So here we can see these two lines which are intersected by a transversal T, right? So here we can see angles are formed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So here this angle 3 and 4, 5 and 6, which are inside, right, inside the lines, all these angles over here, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5 and angle 6, all these angles over here are nothing but these are the interior angles, right? These are the interior angles. And if you see the angles marked in blue, like this angle one over here, 
this angle 2, this angle 7 and this angle 8. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 7 and angle 8, all these are basically exterior angles because they are formed outside the line. So now we are aware of these terms. Now let's move ahead. Let's see angle pairs that are formed when two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal. Like here we can see these two lines M and N which are parallel over here. They are intersected by this transversal T. You can see the angles formed over here. Now we will talk about the different types of angles that are formed. First let's talk about the corresponding angles. Like angle 1 over here and angle 5. They are a pair of corresponding angles. They're on the same side of the transversal, right? One is outside, one is inside. Take a look at another pair like angle 2 and angle 6 on the other side of the transversal. Same side, but one is outside, one is inside. Similarly, angle 3 and angle 7. One is inside, one is outside, but they're on the same side. Angle 4 and angle 8. All these are pair of corresponding angles. Moving to the next pair of angles, which is alternate interior angles. Like here, you can see that this angle 3 and this angle 5 over here, these are the pair of alternate interior angles because they are formed inside. So both these angles are basically on the, on the different sides of the transversal. Similarly, this angle 4 and angle 6, we're only talking about alternate interior. So I'm considering only the interior ones. Talking about alternate exterior angles like we have here angle 1 and angle 7, different sides of transversal and both are in the exterior, both are outside. Similarly, here angle 2 and angle 8, they are also going to be pair of alternate exterior angles. Moving to the next pair, which is pair of interior angles on the same side of transversal. As it suggests on the same side of transversal, let's suppose if I'm talking about this side, this angle 3 and angle 6, they're forming a pair of interior angles. They're on the same side of transversal, so their sum is actually would be equals to 180 degree. So angle 3 plus angle 6 are going to be equals to 180 degrees. Similarly, angle 4 and angle 5 are on the same side. So I would say that angle 4 and angle 5, they would add up to give 180 degree. Yes, these are also called co-interior angles as well. Now let's move ahead. So till now you saw corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles and pair of interior angles on the same side of transversal. But I know it's a little bit confusing first time when you learn it, how to remember all this, right? So there are a few ways to remember this. First of all, let's talk about alternate angles. Now individually we are going to see them. So these two lines P and Q are parallel which are intersected by a transversal L. So one condition, for all these pair of angles to be equal or like I said the sum is 180 degree, for all this to happen, one thing that we need here is the lines should be parallel and then they should be intersected by a transversal. Alright, so here I can see that P and Q are parallel, L is a transversal. So here this angle X and angle X over here, these are two going to be equal because they are forming a pair of alternate interior angles. Similarly, angle Y and angle Y are equal. They are forming a pair of alternate interior angles. Now, let's try to understand how are we going to remember this. So whenever you see that a Z shape is formed, you can see that alternate angles are formed. Like here lines are parallel, you can see this highlighted in yellow. So a Z is formed. So I would say this angle would be equal to this angle because alternate angle is formed. And this way also Z is formed. This angle is going to be equal to this angle. So this way alternate interior angles are formed here. Similarly for exterior as well you can do that. So like this one over here, this is an exterior, this is here an exterior. Similarly like here Z is formed. So this angle over here, this angle over here, or you can say this angle over here, this angle over here, like this. Similarly for the exterior angles, this angle over here, this angle over here. Like here as well, Z is formed, right? So here this angle, this angle would be equal. Similarly, this and this would be equal. You can say this angle over here and this angle over here, they would be equal. Similarly for this and this as well. So whenever you see Z is formed, whenever you see parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, use a pencil and try drawing over it. You would see if a Z is formed, so alternate angles would be equal in that case. That's a nice way to remember it. Let's move ahead to the corresponding angles. Like these pair of lines M and N over here are intersected by this transversal T. So what I can see over here is angle one and angle two are going going to be equal they're forming a pair of corresponding angles right now how to remember this like it's a little confusing right so when you see f shape is formed then it's a way to remember that these are the corresponding angles like here we can see f is formed in these parallel lines so as i said it would be on the same side of the transversal and one would be outside one angle would be inside so these are the two pairs in the similar way these are the two pairs this pair and this pair Similarly, here as well, F is formed. So this pair and this pair, one is inside the line, one is outside the line. Similarly, this pair over here and this pair. Similarly, we can say over here as well, this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle are going to be equal like this. This is 
interesting way to remember alternate angles and corresponding angles. So we have talked about a lot of angles, lot of information I've given you. Now it's time to solve some questions. All right, so here is the first one. In the figure, the value of angle X plus angle Y is. So here I can see this ST is actually parallel to this PO. And this line over here is nothing but that's a transversal. If I extend this, it will look like a transversal, like it is intersecting them. So I need the value of X and Y so that I can add them up and get to the final result. So here I can see that, look at this line. This is 130 degree, this is Y. They're on a straight line. So a linear pair is formed, right? So I can say that 130 degrees plus y is equals to 180 degrees in the bracket always mention the reason whenever we are solving any question from geometry so y is going to be equals to 180 degree minus 130 degree y would be equals to 50 degree in that case i have the value of y now i need the value of x look at this carefully if i extend this this looks like a z a z is formed so x would be equals to 85 degrees right so x is equals to 85 degrees similarly simply you can say here alternate interior angles right so i have the value of x and y so their sum is going to be 50 degrees plus 85 degrees that's going to be equals to 135 degrees that would be the final answer a simple question if you understand the logics well now let's move ahead to the next one in the given figure aoc is a line find x so this is aoc right this is a line you can see 3x over here and this is 60 degree so I can see this is a straight line. So sum of angles over here is going to be what? That's going to be 180 degree. Again, the sum would be 180 degree. So this is linear pair, right? It's formed on a straight line. So 3x is going to be equals to 180 degrees minus 60 degree. So 3x is actually equals to 120 degrees. X would be equals to 120 degrees by 3. That's going to be equals to 40 degrees. So value of x is 40 degree. We have the value of x from here. A simple question. Now let's move ahead to the next one. In the given figure, if line L is parallel to line M, find X. So this line L and M are parallel. You need X over here. Now this is 115 degrees, right? So this is a straight line. First, I'll find out the value of this angle from here. Basically, there are multiple ways to solve these kind of questions. But let's suppose if I first find out the value of this, what is this going to be? So over here, let's suppose, let's mark this as, let's say this is Y, right? So this is going to be what? y plus 115 degrees is equals to 180 degrees again mention the reason that it is linear pair right an angle their sum would be 180 degree in that case because they are on a straight line right this pair so 180 degrees minus 115 degrees that's going to be 65 degrees so i have this value of y that's 65 degrees now look caref carefully look at this these are parallel lines it's already mentioned so this is a transversal so what we can see from here is a z is formed actually so this angle and this angle is going to be equal that means this angle over here is also going to be 65 degrees now all these angles are on a straight line so their sum is going to be equals to 180 degrees so i can simply say from here is that angle this angle i a c over here is going to be equals to angle a c b that's equals to 65 degrees just mention the reason alternate interior angles alternate interior angles now all this is on a straight line let's add all them up so what am i going to get here that's x plus 50 degrees plus 65 degrees is equals to 180 degrees because it's on a straight line so, so a straight line is of 180 degrees so x plus 115 degrees is equals to 180 degrees x is equals to 180 minus 115 degrees that's going to be equals to what that would be equal to 65 degrees that's the value of x so we have got the result all right, so that's it from my end. But before we end the session, I have a question for you. So this is the question that you can try out at home all by yourself. So find the value of X and Y. And let us know the answers in the comment section below. And again, I'm just reminding you, don't forget, link is there in the description and code is YT free. Do check this out. I'm sure that you would love the app. And don't worry, we have got you covered. So many sessions we have lined up for you from every Monday to Friday to make you exam ready. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.